Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm recording now and I've got ourselves going and I'm late again today because I was taking a leak and then I suddenly realized that uh, time had passed and here I am and I'm ready to talk to uh, the crew who calls here, which I love to do on uh, this is a very casual show. So sometimes it was a couple of minutes. I'm about a minute late. I was about half a minute late. But anyway, let me see here. Admit people. There we go. Let's admit them all. And let's see who uh, who's here. Um, okay, there's Andrew Deutsch and there's me. Wait a minute. Where is everybody? What happened? Hold on. Hold on a second. There we go. Jiggle the handle. I, I admit. Oh, I thought I admitted all. I guess I didn't admit all. I just admitted you. <laughs> uh, here comes the rest. Here comes Sheck. I'm, I'm comes honored. Chism, Scott Boddicker and Charlie Wallace and Edward Berger and Len LaFrisco. We're off to a roaring start for our little pop up show. How are you all? Doing great. Good. Really good. Uh, I, I just pick, put this thing on casually. I want to just make sure we're going out over uh, Facebook, okay? Because uh, it's, uh, you know. It's first it said it couldn't see the, the picture, but now there we go. Oh, yeah, we're on. We're okay. Hey, everybody. Friday, it's Monday. <laughs> I said it's Friday. It's Monday. Monday. Uh, yeah, how y'all doing on a Monday? Good. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, how you doing? Oh, pretty good. No. Out here. What? What? Hiding out here. Hiding out here. Yeah. Oh, listen, New Texas is like between Texas and uh, Florida. They said if they were other countries, if they were their own countries, they would be number one and number two in the world for COVID. <laughs> I think Louisiana's bad too. But on this side. Is Louisiana pretty bad right now? Yeah. Well, they just canceled the Jazz Fest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of things are starting to get canceled that weren't uh, weren't uh, existing before. Yeah. You think they're going to have this giant concert in Central Park in two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> so fucking stupid. Yeah, well, uh, I didn't stop to think about that, but I, I and I did see an ad for it yesterday and I didn't think about, oh, gee, you know, of course. And also the other four boroughs are going to have their own concerts that same right. week. But, but wait a minute, isn't, uh, isn't, um, are, are, don't you have to be vaccinated to go to the Central Park concert? I it's think gonna have, so. It's going to be 70,000 people. Yeah. yeah. How are they going to check and match to ID? I was, I've, I've been at concerts that require vaccination and people just have photos of their friend's card on their phone. They show it and they go in. Oh boy. Yep. Yeah, you can go online, I think, and buy those cards and yeah. fill them out yourself. That's how I'm yeah. financing my new house. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! I'm telling you, it just—it never stops. This, this thing isn't over yet. What's Marjorie doing? The best part about society is we keep reperfecting stupidity. It's really a. <laughs> It's an amazing skill. Well, I mean, isn't this uh, isn't this a perfect example of the Darwin thing? You know, yeah. of, of Darwinism. This is weeding out the uh, the uh, stupid. Yeah. So, you know, I got to tell you, I'm really glad it's going this way, though, is that, that the folks that are uh, railing so hard and talking about conspiracies and whatnot, those are the ones who are, you know, up here anyway in Canada, 95 percent. Uh, or even higher of the hospitalizations are folks who are unvaccinated. I think it's similar down down south, yeah, no, right? It is. But, it is. but they're breeding variants that are going to get us. But, but here, yeah. here's the point. Yeah. Plus, I plus all the children that have been right and the children under. But here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing that I, that gets me is that these people are really the assholes who have made this worse by not getting. If everybody in the country had gone out and gotten the, the vaccine, we wouldn't have the Delta virus. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, maybe we have to one a couple of other things like start questioning who comes into this country and whether these people have uh, the proper vaccinations and things like that. But uh, uh, otherwise, um, well, look what's happening in Canada to Mike Chisholm. My area where if, I, if I've I got if I've got my vaccination card and I've got I did a nose swab within three days of trying to go over that bridge to Canada, I can go. 
But he's not allowed to leave. Yes, yes. They say next week. Next week? Yeah, I, I've got tickets booked to Vegas already in uh, in mid-September, and it looks like it's going to happen. Well, that's mid no. It's still a month, month from now. That's a month away, Alex. I wouldn't. I would. You know, I'd say to Marjorie, "Hey, let's let's make a let's get a ticket and let's go to Paris." Okay, France isn't that terrible right now. Let's go to Paris. But we don't know. Next month it may be terrible. Or yep. can you get back to the United States? That's another point. Paris? Yeah. That's another point. Yeah, yeah. These are the questions I'm having to to weigh. Like I, I really, really, really want to go. Um, but yeah, these are the things I have to think about. Yeah, you don't know, but you just don't know. Yeah, so I'm there we... from the 11th to the 17th. What happens if, if within that six days, something happens, I get trapped in Las Vegas? Like, God, that sounds like the name of a movie, fucking trapped in Las Vegas. I don't know if I want to be that guy. <laughs> like Wasn't Nicholas Cage in that movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I went, one time I spent five days in Las Vegas because I was there for a convention. Uh, the uh, CS show for when I was working at Play Incorporated, and I spent five days there. That's about two days, three days more yep. than you can really take. Yeah, you know, it's fun for the first day, it's fun for the second day, the third day, the buffet is getting a little bit long in the tooth for you. Okay, <laughs> and by the fifth day, you're gonna get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> because there's nothing real around you you know it's all fake right and and uh and nothing but magicians so you know what the hell <laughs> whenever i get stuck out there for conventions i wake up early and go hike the canyons and the trails and things just to be normal before i have to deal with the damn strip and the conventions yeah I, 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 11, we've done 11 nights in las vegas but oh. you can do it the thing is you got to book yourself to things like that why were you doing time. why were you doing 11 nights in vegas was this a vacation um, no well okay so we had a convention and okay. then we decided to make a vacation after the convention and what, see what kind we, of what kind of convention was it so i'm in the financial world oh okay, okay. so like it was like a three-day deal so what kind of for a financial convention what kind of hookers show up for that <laughs> <laughs> All sorts. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. The entire the entire uh, plethora of, of of categories would be represented. I would like. Say. I wonder if they ever if they ever held a, com a comic con in Vegas. Mm. What kind they of hookers would show up for that convention? They do. <laughs> they do hold it there. Dressed they do, Wonder Woman. They do. They do. They hold the comic con there, or do they hold a no? A different one. Yeah. yeah, I've got a friend whose whose kids are into that whole Comic Con thing, and they always tell me the Vegas show. You always want to go the first or second day because by the time the convention gets to the end of the time, mm -hmm. there's a nerd funk in the air from all the <laughs> the nerd funk, all the costumes and stuff are getting ripe in the heat of Vegas. I call it the nerd funk. <laughs> I saw nerd funk last year live. They were fantastic. Well, also yeah, at the they, same time as the CES, they were holding the adult video <laughs> convention as well. And uh, you go there and all the women are there, you know, giving autographs out to people with their tits hanging out, you know, and, uh, and, and, and you go, gee, what kind of hookers show up for this? I mean, they just don't have a <laughs> and chance. And they go, us. You know? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mark Thorner, how are you? Oh, lurking about. Is that a green screen in back of you? Uh, actually, this is what's baked into Zoom. You can do this without a Oh, green that screen. one's baked into Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's my picture, but I'm like, yeah. You know, it's like how the heck they figured this one out. I don't know, but it works. That's that's Florida, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and uh, Scott is in Texas. Scott, Scott, and so is Charlie. Boy, the I. I worry about the two of you, you know, because your <laughs> governor, he he should be shot. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Unlike Florida, right? <laughs> yeah. I'd say line them both up against the wall and shoot. Yeah. Keep you out of, to keep you out of trouble, you do mean with a squirt gun, right? <laughs> uh, you know something? They're killing people. Yeah. Um, they they are. are killing people. They are. They and are. I would say that would be self-defense. 
you know? Gov- Governor Death Santis. Oh, jeez. <laughs> He's going to hold back oh, that's too kind. <laughs> to the schools if they allow it. Yeah. Amazing. Just and the amazing. school districts should decide within themselves. Some of them are already have lawsuits against the census. And in Queens, in Queens, Shecky just doesn't leave the house. I mean, that's Correct. pretty much right. Right. I canceled that convention in Baltimore in two weeks today. And he because mm-hmm. they expect like two thousand people a day. Yeah. Hey. It's a film in convention. a hotel. It's a film convention, right? Film convention. Well, media dealer's room, buy autographs from stars in the 70s who shows I never have seen. (laughs) Right. And it was like, oh, I'm going to drive down there and not buy autographs from people I've actually never seen their TV shows. (laughs) Really? Well, you know, I mean, and and that kind of convention, I mean, you just don't know. Are they are they? Well, the fellow who's running it has good intentions. And we'll have people, he's going to have police on site, you know, hired police that will check your vaccine passport and give you a sticker and things. But I still don't trust it. I don't blame you. How, how, about, you, blame how, you. how about you, Mark? You're the only one here from Florida. Uh, it, 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 do, do you still want to go outdoors a lot? Yes. Oh, really? Because where I go, there's no not many people. There's not many all. people. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I'm going out in the swamps. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's what kept me Al- sane. Alligators do not have COVID. No, bear. and I would go, and I go to this convention if it was a couple hundred people. But if you're going to tell me to be two thousand people in a room, a ballroom, yeah, that's not good. Checky, which good. hotel is this being being? Uh... It's in Hunt Valley, Maryland. Oh, the Hunt Valley Inn. That's it's actually. Um, oh, it's a great hotel. Yeah, I, I've been a bunch of times over the years. And the only reason I wanted to go is I don't know if you know the barbecue place about a half a mile down the road. <laughs> I, this is amazing. I mean, the Maryland Inn. I never heard of it, and yet it, there well, are people a, on this uh, panel who have been there. <laughs> it's been well, a home to a lot of conventions over the years. I see. Uh, I think, and it's a really nice hotel. Yeah. But just the fact there are going to be so many, what I'm now calling mouth breathers, in the same area of me. I don't want that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, again, not to buy autographs from people I've never watched their show. Right. Oh, Parker Stevenson, $50. He'll sign a picture. Oh, boy. I heard for 10, you can get boy. for 10 bucks, you can get the orangutan from every which way but loose to sign your picture. Clint Eastwood will do that. What would you say, Scott? I said Clint Eastwood, the orangutan. Mm. Yeah, 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 that was yeah, uh, that... but just you know, like, what, what do I need to do this for? Just because I like the barbecue. That's exactly what Clint Eastwood <laughs> said about the orangutan when he was doing the movie. What do I have to do this for? Uh, well, I had a hard time figuring out which one was which. <laughs> which, which, one which was, was Clint, which was the orangutan. Oh, I see. Okay. You got to give Clint some credit. He's like 90 and still directing. Yeah. Yeah. Movie coming Is he out 90? 90? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 91. I give him all the credit. That dude is a big bucket of wind for that guy. That guy is just spectacular. What a career. Oh, he's a right wing asshole, though. Right, but he's a, good, he's a good filmmaker. He's a good director. He's still, he's still a good filmmaker. I mean, uh, uh, so is Woody Allen. And Woody Allen is what, 87, 86? No, yeah, yeah. 81 or two. No, no, no. Older than that. Wait yeah, I think, hold on a second. I think I'll go to the expert. Echo, how old is Woody Allen? 86. Woody Allen is 85 years old. 85 years old. <laughs> Didn't have his birthday yet this year. What? He hasn't had his birthday yet this year. Right. He's got another one. 85, you know, still. And still working, still I working. guess. No, well, but he's not really. He's having a hard time getting money to finance his films. Money and, and, and the right stars. stars. And people. But it's also a problem of insurance companies might yeah. not want to right. no, insure yeah. a man of that age. Well, he's making been, movies. I mean, he's got a new one that's playing throughout Europe and festivals, and he's got one in the can now. So they're he's doing better in Europe. Europe. 
Yeah, he's doing better. Well, he had to, the last one, which my friend Bobby Slayton was in for one second, literally one second. And Woody flew him all the way to, where was it, Italy, uh, where they filmed it, um, and put him up in, for a couple of days. And he just walked by doing one line. And the last one's in San Sebastian. San Sebastian, that's where he went. Unbelievably beautiful. I mean, I've seen the movie. I mean, both the locales are unbelievable. Yeah. But so did you, did you see that movie? Yes, I did. Did you, did you see Bobby Slayton? I, He's a I guy, he, he, don't blink. Don't blink. I, I almost had more time in a George Clooney movie than he has in this one. <laughs> uh, and I'm only on the radio, okay? But, uh, but he, uh, he, he walks by and he says something about something and that's it. You know, it's just a, a very simple part that he had to do. But he, you know, they flew him over there, I guess, first class or business or something like that. Well, SAG-AFTRA, I think he probably had to be flown first class or business class. Yeah, put him up at a hotel, the whole thing for one line. And he's also in a group scene having dinner. But he doesn't have a line in there. Um, Woody did use him on his TV show, the one he did for Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, he was in that. And there was a whole, I mean, he had a whole nice chunk. He yeah. played his lawyer. Yeah. And uh, it was a really nice chunk for him on that one. He was also in uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, a couple times. And uh, what, uh, what, uh, what else? He does a lot of things. He was in Dream Girls. Hmm. You know, Rat Pack movie on HBO. Rat Pack movie on HBO. He played Joey Bishop. I mean, he's a, he's a really good actor. He did a you voice know, on The Simpsons. Uh, uh, didn't he? Uh, well, we've talked about this, Bobby and I, about his acting ability. His acting ability isn't as good as it could be if someone would teach him how to act. <laughs> uh, here's the problem. Uh, Bobby, you know, he, Bobby's okay when there's some kind of emotion, emotional line. But when he just has to say, hey, honey, I'm home, he's horrible. Mm. You know, it's the simple lines he can't do. But the, the ones that take acting chops, he's okay. He did that movie with, uh, 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 with uh, the, the Bandits. Bandits was the name of the movie. And that was with uh, uh, Bobby, uh, what, what's his name? Thornton. Um, Billy Bob. Bob. Billy Bob. Bob Thornton. And who was the other lead in that picture? Was it Clooney? No. Anyway, they're they're robbers and they rob banks and things like that. And they set people up and then they both fall in love with the same woman played play by Kate Blanchett. And he is a news guy who keeps reporting on these people. You know, he's kind of like one of these, like it's like, uh, oh, I don't know. What's the thing we watch every day? The, the, the bad news outfit. Um, <laughs> bad news. You know what I'm talking about. You know. No, no, no. You, the, at four o'clock in the afternoon. TMZ. TMZ. <laughs> He's kind of that kind of reporter. All right. Alex, and, no one's supposed to know we watch TMZ. we <laughs> <laughs> got a camera. Uh, nobody's allowed to know that Shecky and I get together yeah. on Saturdays on the phone and discuss what's been happening on Below Deck Mediterranean. <laughs> oh, I want, I want in. <laughs> I, have, I love that. A show. friend of mine is filming this week. They are filming on that show. A friend of mine. Well, yeah. but what's he doing? He can't. He doesn't have two hundred thousand dollars to pay for the trip. No, but his uh, tech founder boss does. Uh, his tech founder boss was on the Dragons Den up here. Uh, he sold Club Penguin to Disney for. He's, he's worth a couple hundred million bucks, and uh, he is taking three couples. And one of the couples is a good buddy of mine. Right. Well, we we yeah. looked it up, right, Shecky? And it cost, what, $200,000 for two days? More or less. But I still think I told you, they not to go too far into it, the producing company charters the boat. So even they tell you $200,000, it's not well, really. Well, but, but don't you pay the production company for chartering, the, for using the boat? If you if you're on well, there, they do, but I don't know if the patrons do. If you can, Mike, try they're paying, find they're out. Go on. No, no, no. They're they're Lane. Lane is the guy's name. He was on the Dragons Den. He's paying the whole thing. I don't know if it's going to be a half million dollars for all three couples for the for the for no, the. It's time, not a half a million dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars for two days is the rental on that boat. 
Yeah, but they might be on for more than two days. I think they're on more than two days. Yeah, they're they're using it as a vacation, but the the show is also filming, and we've got a we've got a poll on uh, which ones are coming back married. (laughs) Okay, Mark, you had your hand up. Oh no 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 no! I accidentally. So, just for the record, I like Dragons Den Canada. I watched that show too. Yeah. Yes, Uh, Shark Tank was taken from the, the Canadian British version. Dragon's Den. And yeah. then well, they British started Dragon's, Dragon's Den, but they Canada. Got Kevin, but they got Kevin O'Leary and um, yeah. the guy on the far right came from the Canadian show. Yeah. yeah, but it was O'Leary, I think, that went to, what's his name, the producer who produces Shark Tank and also came up with Trump. Uh, he, <laughs> Burkett, uh, Mark Burkett? Mark, Bur- uh, Mark uh, Burnett. Uh, Burnett. Mark Burnett. 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 Mark Burnett. Burnett. Uh, he um, wasn't he an he intern on Letterman? And he said, "I want to do the show in America." And they he helped. They kind of got together and came up with Shark Tank, which is just it's a ripoff of those other shows, but very yeah. well done. A very yeah. One of the it's a, one of the few ripoffs that I can actually say is probably better than the original. In many ways. Well, the British one is just very British, can I say? Yeah. Very dry. Very dry. It's very dry. The Canadian one is fun. I, I don't know. I, 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 well, uh, I like I, the ones on the Canadian show. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the Australian one, which I also like. I haven't seen that one. Oh, I've seen yeah. the Italian, uh, the Australian Shark Tank. Yeah, it's good too. I mean, the. Because the, the, it, they're having fun. It's a different. Is, vibe. Is it, wait a minute. It's not Dragon's Den in Australia. It's Shark Tank. It's Shark it? Tank Australia, I think, and Dragon's Den Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. But he, so I uh, had good luck to your friend uh, on that boat because uh, you yeah. know so many things are going on below deck. I don't know if they're going to survive it. <laughs> Do you notice I'll on that show? For sure. I'll on that show, they always manage to show women like taking that. taking their shirts off to get dressed, but with their back to the camera, but yep. just for a short time. They like, oops, we we didn't want to shoot that. Of course, we edited it in, but you know. But they've also had it with men's asses you know coming out of the bathroom yep mm-hmm. where they you know why do they do it? that well why don't we grow up on american television <laughs> you know it's isn't it time we grew up and just said you know nothing wrong if a few penises get seen on tv or a few women's uh, uh bushes Vagina. or but are they called vaginas is that what they're called uh, yeah. uh, vaginas <laughs> Or, you know, I mean, when are we going to get over that? I mean, you could have yeah, been- but the children, oh, the children <laughs> see. Yeah, there was a there was a limp cock that ran that apprentice show for a while. Yeah, right, the exactly. orange one. But no, but I mean, in 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 Britain, I mean, they think nothing of nudity and using four letter words and things like that, and we think we're protecting the children. Yeah, fuck the children. I want television. You know, when, once it's eight o'clock, they should be in bed. Yeah. All right? right. Well, it's a parent's responsibility. It's not the production company. Yeah. And these kids can get on Netflix or anything all anytime and hear everything they want. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And they do. And they do. But then they're worried about being sued by the FCC. I mean, I'm not supporting this, but, you know. It's ridiculous. I mean, they've all got Pornhub on their phones. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you you pronou- I always found, found it incredible that FCC is a word that if you pronounced it, you couldn't say on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but they they sit down. I mean, you know, they, they a lot of times they used to say to me at radio stations, "Well, you can't say that because we'll get hit by the FCC." Do you know how many times in the last hundred years of radio i mean it's almost a hundred years the fcc has actually docked somebody a lot of money for a four-letter word or for well nothing. didn't howard stern get docked yeah, yeah. That was the example I, was I think he did right. but but what's his name uh my old boss um Who, mel mel mccarmison refused to pay it good for he him said, i'm not gonna pay it i think he went to court and he got it suspended because he said, you know, you can't you can't charge me this kind of money for somebody saying words. 
you know, yeah, I think it was like uh, Bongo Fiesta or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah there was there was a worse one that uh, Opie and is it Anthony? They got yeah. kicked off the air by the FCC. No, but that was they were that fined was for, and that was for the uh, having two people fucking in St. Patrick's Cathedral <laughs> on the air, <laughs> on the air, uh, on the air. But it was that. radio; you couldn't see it. Okay. But I guess they, I think they had a contest to find two people who were willing to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was sponsored by that beer company, Samuel Adams. Yeah. And so they got fired from their station for doing that. But I'm saying actual fines that have actually been paid almost zero. Okay. But didn't CBS pay for the Super Bowl thing? What Super Bowl thing? Well, that Janet Jackson. Yeah. Where she... I don't think so. That was, you know, you can't you can't charge somebody with doing something that happened because some accident happened. You know, it wasn't an accident. Well, I mean, but if you're going to charge it, buddy, you charge Janet Jackson and uh, what's his name? Uh, Justin, Timberlake. Just, Justin Timberlake was it? I'm yeah. bad at names today because I took the heavy pill last night. <laughs> uh, yeah, Justin Timberlake. I mean, I, all I'm saying is is that. When I was first doing radio, they would say, oh, you get bopped for that. And I looked it up. Nobody ever got charged with four-letter words on radio. You know, somebody accidentally said them, and they went, okay, it was an accident. You know, you just, they write you a letter. We heard you said a four-letter word on the air, and then you the station writes back, yeah, it was an accident. The mic was open, blah, 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 blah. Case closed. That's all so we forgot to hit the seven-second delay. Yeah, right. exactly. Oh, by the way, the FCC never said you had to have a seven-second delay. They assume that you should because you don't want to get four letter words to go on on the air. But if you don't have a set, this is the funny part. If you don't have a seven second delay, you haven't committed, and somebody says a four letter word, you're not guilty of anything. It was an accident, and that's the way it happened. Okay. You had no way of preventing it because you couldn't stop it through the seven second delay. Oh. But if you're using the seven second delay and that word gets through, you've then done something wrong. So it's best not to have a seven second delay. Yes, hmm. uh, Mike. Uh, on TV though, like Saturday Night Live has been fined famously a few times. I thought it was 400 grand, isn't it? When Sam Jackson was on there and he said, he said, I don't know if it was motherfucker or whatever it was that he well, said. Well, there's a question as to whether he really did. Okay. You know, yeah. But I thought that was a famous thing on Saturday Night Live, like Damon Wayans did it, and I thought I thought it was four hundred grand every time it happened to them. But I, that that could be just well, I don't know that they started charging or they had a rate card for that <laughs> thing. Punch card. Well, you get to say fuck for four hundred, but hey, you want to say motherfucker? That's two <laughs> words. You can get that for eight. Okay, what do you want? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. There was that guy, was it Charlie Rocket? That That's who it was. Charles Rocket, yep. who said Charles Rocket, yeah. That was with the JR thing, but he fucking shot him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the other funny part about it was that once it got to the West Coast and uh, into the uh, uh, the Midwest and other areas where it was already shown by it. delay, it was, it was edited out. So, yeah. you know... Um, it's just amazing that we're having the same conversation like that George Carlin had in 1972. Well, no, what I used to argue was with, with bosses was, do you realize how much effort we go to to prevent certain words from getting on the air? And it's insane because these words are just words. Yeah, words. You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> actions you probably should be more worried about than words. You know, and uh, um, they said, yeah, we know, but we got to put up with the FCC and blah, blah, blah. And they always would use the FCC <laughs> as an excuse. And then you would look back and the FCC never really cared much. The only station prior to when I was in the, in the midst of my career that ever really got fined heavily was a radio station who was fined for financial impropriety. And, and uh, uh, you know, and four letter words, uh, they, the SEC didn't even want to deal with that, you know, uh, and, but everybody goes crazy when a four letter word gets on television. This, that's the other part. If, if on NBC, let's say during the Olympics, I'm a host and I go, blah, 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 fuck. <laughs> everybody goes crazy. But now if that same Olympic event is shown on cable, nobody pays it's attention fine. to it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, what, what's the difference? But it's idiocy. It's just stupidity. It, it, yeah, it's the kind of idiocy we engage in. But don't well, we because get... one's free over the air, 
and one you have to pay for. So if you pay for it, you're allowed to say fuck. Well, I pay for cable, so I can, NBC should be able to say fuck. <laughs> yeah, but you can watch NBC for free with one of those antennas. Is that still is that still a thing? Yeah, that actually still exists. Huh? Yeah, well, I guess television by antenna. I don't pay for it. Yeah, they use the argument huh. that, that you know you don't pay for that. Huh. So well, do, uh, do you feel like we we're desensitized to those words now? I, I feel like I am. I don't think it matters. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. fucking hear it. You know, a six year old a six year old those words. Right. You know. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I'd like to hear Edward Burr say fuck. <laughs> oh, wait, I, I don't like saying those words. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Go you ahead. want me to say it? But I'll never say it again. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Score. Okay, well, I'm going to excise that mean. from this show. And use okay, it good, because I, I don't want that getting around. I'm going to use that in a cartoon. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we were kids, it's not like we never heard those words. Right. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I walk down the street. This is Harlem. I can't tell you between uh, 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 Seventh Avenue and Mal Malcolm X Boulevard uh, how many times I hear the term motherfucker. Mm. You know, it's like motherfucker, 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 all the way down. Yeah, or, or hey, and continue that yep. word yeah and well it's fine you know because okay. i'm black i'm allowed to say that well, i can't call it i just say yeah i've got daughters from it so <laughs> <laughs> so 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 mark uh, you really got a problem there with your governor he is just a piece of fucking goddamn i work excuse me i just said those words uh, <laughs> Yeah. There's like monetizing this show. You would know I just put down when I when I post. And he'll get reelected. So and has to be the Republican nominee if Trump isn't. Oh, <laughs> that's even, you know, as that Steve, that's even scarier thinking that yeah. seventy percent say if Trump isn't amongst the candidates, they want him. Do you know what they oh. say though? Who is is also in line? Hold on to your skin. No, Tim Scott. Yeah, I heard oh. that. Yes, let's get our version of Obama into office. Wow. What if Obama was a Republican asshole? I think it might go something <laughs> like this. And if Obama was a Republican, nobody would have cared about his birthday party over the weekend. No. Yeah. Right. What, what was all the heat about? The heat? To begin with, he canceled the big party. Yeah. He was well, he caused the traffic jam at the end on, on in P-Town or whichever place in the... You know, Martha's Vineyard. He, oh my God, he caused a tr tremendous tr traffic jam at Martha's Vineyard. That's an I island. Think, I think he, but he only let in how many people? It wasn't. Uh, I have no idea. It, it he just scaled it back. It was close family and so on. But if he was a Republican, no one would, you know, or not. The New York Post wouldn't have cared. How many homes like that are there in Martha's Vineyard, and how many hold big giant parties in Martha's Vineyard? You know. A lot of Republicans. Yeah, right. But uh, he, here comes the uh, here comes the Negro. Let's uh, <laughs> let's give him a bad time. Yeah. Has anybody uh, in the see what happens? The property uh, values go down the minute they move into your neighborhood. <laughs> Has anybody here ever been to Martha's Vineyard? Yeah. I have. Yeah. Long you have? Is it gorgeous? I mean, I've only heard legends of it. I think they're near, uh, what's his name? They're near, I think, near the JFK compound. Like, yeah. um, Kenneth. My, my ex I was a sport. Sailed, and we would sail yeah. up every year there, staying and sail back. Yeah. But it's, it, not, it's yeah. nice. It's a lot of rich people and a lot of tourists. But have you seen the homie boy? Have you nice. seen that thing? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous, but it's huge. I mean, I don't know how much space does he need. I just wants to stretch out, I guess. You know. you know, and how is it different than having a house in the Hamptons in some way? You know, another enclave. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's a beautiful home. Just an abs absolutely beautiful home. It's not. It's not one of these homes where somebody said, "I'm going to buy a big home," and then he got ostentatious. It's just a big home that's very, very nice. I mean, like Jeter's home. Huh? Like Derek Jeter's home. I don't know. What, I, I wouldn't know about that. I barely Where is Derek. his home, but Shecky? Huh? Jeter's home was Tampa. Mike, you might know better because Letterman mentioned it every night. 
Oh, see, I thought that house was like this gorgeous house in the heart of New York somewhere because they would show aerial shots of Jeter's place. Oh, no, it was in Florida. It was down in Florida. Okay, okay. Yeah, check it out. I think it was Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. And what was was wrong with it? Uh, 35 rooms. Yeah. 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 Oh, Oh, my God. I just don't know why you would move into a place that big. Well, he sold it recently. (laughs) Because you can. Yeah, but I mean, if you've got 35 rooms, you're never going to have, do you have 35 people you're going to invite over at one time? <laughs> no. You know? Uh, I agree. You know, so I mean, I don't, I don't understand it, but uh, what, did we, what did we hear about a home that we were looking into, Marjorie, that you said? A million three. A million three. Where is it? It's, a, it's an hour, an hour and a half um, out of New York. Out in New York, yeah. I mean, you would think up there would they be cheaper, but no, No, they've gotten very expensive. That's what has been moving to the last year. Well, it's because a lot of people are moving out of New York, also because a lot of people now are able to telecommute. And so they just decided to get the hell out of New York. That's right. Um, You know, um, but they don't know Queens. If they knew Queens, they just moved there, right? Shecky. <laughs> no, a story and place like that are very expensive now. Hard to believe. Where, where are you, Ed, Edward? I'm in Flushing. You're in Flushing. Oh, you're in uh, the Chinese section of Flushing. I know. I'm, not, I'm really. I'm really. If I was a little further, I'd be in Fresh Meadows. Yeah, but you are in the Chinese area of Flushing. It's yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, which used to be a Jewish enclave. I yeah. lived there when I was first married. Nice. Flushing. Uh, yeah, I went to I went to Flushing one day with uh, with uh, with Albert, mm-hmm. and uh, they they have a big huge meat market there that sells. Ready for this? Big Live giant turtles. Giant turtles. Turtles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, for eating, for eating. But they don't they don't boil them there. You have to take them home and figure out how you do that. Well, we I have those. Asian markets like in Fresh Meadows, they've got live turtles on sale. Yeah. That place Flushing also had a lot of live food. Well, we have for years known about turtle soup. You know? And uh, I don't know. I guess we don't want to eat them because we don't want to eat anything that used to have an American flag on its back. (laughs) Remember when they used to put all those decals on the turtles before they'd sell them to the kids? And they take the turtle home. The turtle died. He died from having the tattoo on his back because that's how they breathe is through their <laughs> through their shell. No, I never had. I never. Had, no. I remember the days you go to the carnival and throw the ping pong ball into the um, goldfish tank. Yeah, got a right. goldfish in a baggie. Yeah, I take and it home. Out a baggie, you home. It'll be dead in two days, and you flush it down the toilet. You flush it I, exactly. I what? threw one in my pond seven years ago. The thing's this big. Oh, <laughs> shit. A monster. <laughs> we had a, a radio station I was at, KILT in Houston. Uh, we used to have, we had a pond in the middle of the building that the station was in. And somebody put a turtle in there, a little turtle. By the time I left there, and that was only two years later, the thing was huge mm. because they grow to their environment. Mm. right in other words you still keep them in a little bowl at home and they're going to stay that big but you put them in a bigger pond and they get bigger and then of course you go down to florida with mark and he goes out in that swamp there and gets bitten by an alligator no mm. i stay far away from alligators you're f- f- far away from alligators as far away as possible <laughs> uh, and but i'll tell you the pond that's behind my house I got this thing called an alligator snapping turtle. Oh, they're mean. No, it's big. It's like Gamera. It looks yeah. like Gamera <laughs> miniaturized. And it's still, it's like the size of a coffee table. Wow. So it's like, oh my God. And, you know, the other problem down here is a lot of turtles get killed because they're crossing the road and oh. people don't slow down. And yeah. it's like, you know, sometimes, yeah, you got to help them across. So, it's a turtle. Have you actually picked up a turtle and moved them to the other side of yeah. the road? Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't go very fast. That's not necessarily true. I've seen a couple of turtles move. They really go like crazy. 
yeah it's like are you kidding me you know but yeah yeah now len down there in uh, california yep. you, don't have, you don't have these kind of problems do you nope we don't even have bugs here i, I don't even see mosquitoes there's nothing <laughs> but there's fire. there's forest fires fire. oh yeah the other day the smoke was blowing around the high pressure system and coming right here even though it's 300 miles away well we got the smoke here in new york a few weeks ago yeah yeah you did yeah, yeah, and yeah. again last week yep really it was again it's last week yeah. beautiful yeah. clear today but you know you just never know last year was the apocalypse the sky was bright orange and just you couldn't breathe it was terrible well it's that way up north where are you yeah. again? you're in Li livermore, livermore. Uh, yeah. yeah east of san francisco directly so. but it, it, yeah but it, it it was closer to you last year than it is now i think so yeah well, i believe it was the good now. news is about these fires eventually they're going to go out because there's nothing left to burn yeah. right is, is it true that it wasn't caused by global warming it was sasquatch the bigfoot no it's because it's because we didn't rake the forest oh well, okay. you, all, <laughs> you, all, you all realize that it is gavin newsom's fault <laughs> yeah they didn't kill bigfoot and he started a fire yeah yeah uh, when when is that stupid election being held uh, a couple uh, of we're getting our ballots soon it's like about a month october isn't it yeah like october know. right right you know, now it, he's three points ahead in the polls yeah well it's it's ridiculous because they i guess there's going to be two questions on there one do you want to recall him and two who do you want to replace him with and a lot of people won't answer the second question if they say no i don't want to uh, impeach him so the problem is going to be is that a very small population of people is really going to get the vote for the new governor if he, in fact, is recalled. Well, also, the, the vote is not like uh, who gets more than 50 percent. No, it's it a, is who gets the most votes. Right. And, and I don't know how many did, what percentage is Schwarzenegger get to be governor? That's Nothing. a great question. I don't know. That's what he I'm was like 17 or 18 percent. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like yeah, but you could you could in a race there like 80 other people, something like that. 80, uh, excuse me, 50 other people running, yeah. maybe 55. Right. So with that many people running. You could just get five percent and be governor. Absolutely. Yep. You know. Yep. It's uh, it's absurd. It's absurd. And it's a waste of California's money. It's costing them a hundred what one hundred thirty five million dollars. Yeah, somewhere in that range. Yeah, just all the stupid election, so the Republicans can maybe, yeah. you know, get a governor in there. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. It's horrible. Uh -huh. How long do you think our governor has, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? Uh, <laughs> well, I, th arrogant, I, I, it? I think if 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 fairness ruled the day, he would have until he left office next year. But there isn't fairness going around. I mean, there are people just because hanging the, the people in the Democratic Party like to eat their young. Or yeah, their also, <laughs> one other thing we forget in New York, those those Democrats are looking to be governor. Letitia mm -hmm. James is already doing fundraising to run for governor. So, yeah, so she had a so she wrote a report and now she's running for governor. Oh, right. okay. And but you know what bothers me is that uh, I just saw uh, the governor's uh lawyer on with this Mohadine or whatever his name is on uh, MSNBC. And he's there trying to nail her. Oh, well, how about this? And the person said this, and the person said that, and blah, 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 blah. And she's, of course, answering all the questions and batting them down, saying, you don't know what you're talking about. Here's the real thing. She says, the governor, why does the governor come forward and talk about this? She said he did a whole thing the other day, a 15-minute video about it. Oh, well, that was just a video. And he's just going after this woman. And if then all of a sudden in the next segment, he had on one of the governor's accusers he treat her like she was gold. You know, he wouldn't. They wouldn't ask her any of the difficult questions. It's 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 just a um, it's a clusterfuck here with that, and it, it's horrible because he he hasn't been charged with anything. Uh, nine of the women, or, or was it eight of the women, that testify that testified to the to the government committee to the state committee. Uh, didn't have a sworn testimony. They were not sworn in. They, you know, they were not going to be charged with anything if they were lying. 
Uh, so, you know, you want people who are literally uh, under oath while they're giving this testimony. They didn't do that. They just took whatever somebody said. And then blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, it's, it's I, I say, look, maybe he's guilty of all of this. Okay. Most of it is very small stuff. You know, one of them was he commented on, you know, the woman that swabbed his nose publicly for the, for the test to, so he could show how easy it was to do a COVID test. That woman is one of the women complaining because when he swabbed, she swabbed his nose and she was wearing this, you know, the, the doctor outfit, the green scrubs. He said, you know, you even look good in that. Jesus Christ. I used get to... him out of office immediately. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the women complaints. It's one of the complaints against him. And I'm going, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, he's just trying to be nice, make comment, be funny, whatever. Oh, I was hurt by that. I, he's, it, she was ruined for the rest of her life because of that statement. So, and you know, how many are looking for money? That's the other question. You know, I mean, let's hold a actual trial, okay? I think he almost probably relishes the criminal case coming along because he can bat it aside without any trouble and just let it go to court. Let people present their evidence and let him present his evidence as well. But all of a sudden you're saying before any of that comes along, oh, you know, Schumer, oh, he's got to quit, resign. President Biden, he has to resign. That can I say a cunt, Kirsten Gillibrand? Uh, he's got to resign. What for? He only is being accused of something. He's he hasn't done anything, and I just think it's grossly unfair. It's not what I look on as fairness in America. It has nothing to do with whether he did it or didn't do it. It's what's happening right now before the fact rather than us going out and getting the facts. Well, you know, and, we, we've just thrown due process totally out the window, right? You know. Absolutely, absolutely. And the press is complicit in this too. Like I was talking about this guy who was nailing the, the governor because he was trying to kind of get her in a corner. And, and, and uh, uh, he wouldn't have done it if that were one of the complainants. He'd be very nice to her. Oh, that's really terrible. What else did he do? You know, I mean, it's just... I, so you asked me the question, how long is he going to be governor? About a minute and a half, because everybody is piling on and causing a situation to exist, which in a democracy shouldn't. That's all I'm saying. Right. Yeah, but Governor Newsom is being recalled because he had dinner at the French Laundry. No, That's exactly. <laughs> well, I think, no, I think he was recalled before that, wasn't he? Anybody in California? No. That's what no. did it. That's what I did. don't think so. That's what did it? The French Laundry? I think, I think that was the, I think that was the trigger. Well, I say they should nail him for that because I couldn't get a reservation there. <laughs> you know how expensive that place is? Jeez. But you remember, Mark, we tried to get a, a, a table at the French Lawn. For a wedding night. Yeah. Okay, you couldn't have afforded it. <laughs> no, we went to the other one. The one... Yeah, no, the Spanish French. laundry, no, the French dryer. <laughs> for my wedding and for my wedding, for my wedding dinner, I could have afforded it. Yes, of course. Right. We went to another very fancy restaurant, and what was it? Ten courses, and they were all the size of this, about that big. <laughs> that was the French place when we couldn't get into the laundry. And, and the thing is, you walk out of there going, "Wasn't that delicious?" Because you don't want to say, "I just pissed away three hundred dollars." Did you go to Le Cirque? <laughs> Huh? Was that Le Cirque? No. No. This was someplace. You, you, you just got to stop Le Cirque. To you just stop to and eat. get some meat on the way uh, home. Where's Le Cirque? Yeah. yeah oh my God, God. I don't remember where it was. Le Cirque in Manhattan. Yeah. Well, Le Cirque's here. Yeah. Is it all these really small <laughs> dishes? No, it's just expensive. It's real expensive, and I've had better. I've had better French food on Fifty Second Street. Yeah. You know. Right. It's, yeah, it's not. I've only there once, and it's really expensive and not that good. There's yeah. that Jamaican one, the Le Jerk Chicken. That place is really good. <laughs> Le Jerk. <laughs> you ever had jerk chicken? It's quite good. Yeah, it's good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to go to Vegas next month and go visit Le In and Out Burger. It's gonna be great. Oh, those are there you go. Go to the go to the Heart Attack Grill. That's more fun. Oh yes, Heart Attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got I a just, soft spot in my heart for In and Out Burger. 
I just saw a restaurant in Vegas called Dick's and you walk in and they absolutely start berating you. They say, what, what the fuck do you want? Why are you in here? Go sit down, shut the fuck up. You know, whatever. <laughs> There's a couple this? places like that. Where is this? In, in Vegas. Yeah. In Vegas, Dick's. That's wonderful. <laughs> I love it. Dick's. Yeah, that, that sounds like fun. I'd like to do it. Yeah. I, I want like to do an experiment crash. like Candid Camera. Open a restaurant where you can, it's all you can eat, but it's based on how much you weigh. 50 cents a pound. <laughs> you got to weigh yourself before you go in. <laughs> see, way see the reaction. Way out. No yeah. way on the way in to decide how much your meal is going to cost. Well, there, there's a place in Texas, right? Where they give you a hamburger or something. It's the biggest hamburger in the world. Biggest steak. That was it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Eat it all in one sitting. There's a lot of places like that. And if you can eat it all in one sitting, oh. it's yeah. free. Back back when I used to weigh about 365 pounds, I would go in one of those places and always beat the challenge <laughs> and ask and ask the question, does dessert come with this? Well, I don't know necessarily, <laughs> I don't know that necessarily being fat qualifies you to be able to eat one of those steaks because you got this guy, what's his name, who does the hot dog hot eating dog, yeah. contest. In uh, Coney Joey, Chestnut. Joey Chestnut, I didn't, I didn't get that size because I didn't eat a lot. <laughs> no, but he's thin as a rail. He's but not. They've had people beat that steak challenge that are, you know, women that are 140 pounds. You know, so. yeah, lightweights. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to eat it also within a certain amount of time. Within like an yeah. hour, hour and a half. Maybe. Like you yeah. have, to eat, have to eat the side dishes and the yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But I, I if I ate one of those things and I could take all the time I wanted. I'd take like two days, you know. <laughs> yeah, eventually, I'd get it down. There was a place in just near the border, near El Centro in California, near Mexico, that had a, the hottest, spiciest burger in America. If you could eat it, you you get your picture on the wall, and it was free. And I did that too. And really? ghost peppers, yeah. Wow. What was it like the next day? <laughs> oh, it, it came out about the same way it went in. Really? <laughs> it, really, really, did it sting? Was it hot? Oh, it was awful. It was, yeah. But, I mean, I mean, but someone me. dared me, Alex. They dared me. What was I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not ready for that till somebody double dog dares me. Uh, it was, it was triple cat dare. Uh, well, did you other... dare them back? What? Did you dare them back to eat for them? I, I would have, but I couldn't speak. <laughs> i used to get this woman calling me after i got off the air at wmca years ago and she was very sexy why don't you come on over blah, blah, blah. this friend of mine is there one day and he says uh, why don't you go over there I go, come on i don't want to go over there who knows what i double dog dare you well <laughs> that was all there was to it and i went over to the hotel which was McAlpin hotel and i go up to the the floor and I the original home of WMCA. She opens the door. Have you ever been in, a, in, a, in an apartment where they have a Jew, huge Steinway piano and you can't figure out how the hell they ever got it in there? <laughs> <laughs> That's what how big this woman was. <laughs> I couldn't see either side of the door jam. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I got to get out of here right now. <laughs> And then she said those deadly words that are worse than double dog dare you. <laughs> she looked at me and said, you don't have to come in if you don't want to. Oh. <laughs> and I went in and I did whatever I did. And I, I think I maybe fucked a crease or something. I <laughs> and it was, it was, and I was out of there. So I get home and my friend then calls me and goes, well, how was it? And my reply was, you know, I've had sex in my lifetime, but I never had anything like that. <laughs> I, Send them I, over. Excuse, excuse me, me, Alex. Could you please stop talking about my mother like that? She, 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 she was absolutely, she was absolutely amazing. <laughs> and uh, he says, "Okay, well, I'm glad you had a nice time. Talk to you later. Bye." <laughs> About four hours later, I get a call. You fucking son of a bitch. I said, what? He said, I went over there. I said, well, what happened? He said, what could happen? I'm standing there and she says to me, you don't have to come in if you don't want to. What could I do? Mm. 
Uh, and I mean, it just uh, that, that that was my double dog dare story. <laughs> Hold on, Alex. Did was that not the one? I might be getting my stories com- confused. Did she not call you back and say you were the best she ever had? <laughs> oh, she said it there while I was there. She said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." That was, that's she the best that's I've ever best. had. Like, Why is Marjorie, Marjorie making that face? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. But that, that, that's one of those wonderful stories mm-hmm. I always remember. You're never going to forget a night like that. You know. Uh, God, when I think back, you know, when you get when you get to this point in your life, you're 91 years, 81. I keep saying 91. Why do I say that? 81 years old, and you look back at all that. It's like this. This. It happened a long time ago, and it's like this huge blur. You know, but. I remember that story and oh, hey, and I went up to the Calpin Hotel and so I, I did things in those days today I wouldn't even have the energy to do, you know? <laughs> it was amazing, just amazing. So Marjorie, what do you think? <laughs> I, agree with you. Huh? I, I couldn't do today what I used to do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know. Who uh, gives a fuck and, and why? Yeah. In fact, I knew I was getting old because it, we went through this thing, this Van Gogh, or Gogh, as uh, some people call it, exhibit oh. that they did this virtual thing. What's it called, Shecky? The immersive, the immersive, immersive Van, Van Gogh. Immersive. And immersive. there were two of them in New York. Marjorie yeah. went to one of them with a friend of hers, and then we went to the one that she took me to, and they were in two different places. And one sucks, and the other one doesn't. And the one I got to go to was the one that sucks. But I, I'm, they make you sit on the floor. I'm sorry, at my age, I don't sit yeah. on the floor. At the other place, they don't, Alex. Yeah, but I mean, I, I've, I just suddenly realized that I couldn't sit down because then it's harder to get up, right? I helped you. You helped me, yeah. But there was this guy who said to me, sit down. I'm going, I can't sit down, you know, give me a break, you know, but I finally, I sat down and then to get up was, you know, I had to, because, because I got a bad knee and I don't want to get on that knee. We sat down against the wall. Yeah. But anyway, so. Uh, hold on, hold on though. I'm literally riveted by this because I'm about to buy tickets to take my wife down to Vancouver for a day trip to go to this Van Gogh immersive thing that's in well, Vancouver. Well, make sure you go to Is it the worth one- it? Side. No, 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 no. He, he's doing this in Canada, Marjorie. Oh, 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 oh. No, they travel around the world. Yeah, yeah. You, I don't know. You find you call him up and say, "Are you the phony, phony one? Or are you the good one? You're the one that has the. <laughs> are you the one that has the VR glasses? Because they have a thing where you can use VR glasses at the end. And supposedly, Marjorie says it's incredible. You just kind of walk through these paintings. You know. Okay. Virtual reality. Yeah. 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 We're literally centering our trip around. Going I thought it. I thought it sucked, and I'll tell you why quickly because we're running out of time here. But I thought it sucked because they literally. It's like if you and I decided, well, let's show Van Gogh to people, and then we cut out the characters in the paintings and glued them somewhere. Yeah. You go. Well, wait a minute. Didn't that thing have a really interesting background? You know, and they just floating these things past you and everything. And I'm going, well, maybe they thought they were doing a great light show, but come on, you know, okay. Van Gogh doesn't deserve this. And then you go out to the to exit through the gift shop, as they say. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it goes on forever. The cash grab. And I said, Marjorie, come over and look at this. And I showed her a thermos bottle with a Van Gogh painting on it. I said, do you think when Van Gogh was doing this, he said to himself, you know, this would go good on a thermos bottle. <laughs> I mean, it was terrible. It was just terrible. It was. But the other one's Marjorie, pretty okay. Like it? Huh? Not the second one. The first one, I'm taking him back to the first one. And I, all through the whole thing, okay. he says, Alex, quit complaining. Quit complaining. You're, oh, you always <laughs> complain. And I'm going, sucks. You she, she, she always complain. And as we're walking out, she looks at me and goes, you know, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so. True and true. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, this is another nice uh, little Monday get together. We always have fun. We don't get snarky. 
you know, because on the other show, I've I've had certain people actually go mental on me, <laughs> you know, uh, and and that's not any fun at all. Scott probably knows what I'm talking about because he probably has heard it, but you know, uh, you guys are just this is just a terrific group of people. I just love you. Uh, uh, Charlie is always welcome to any show that I do. Uh, Andrew, I love you to death. You're so funny. Steve Bender, incredible. Well, after, now after this Delta virus, virus is over, we'll go have dinner. Okay? Yeah, we'll, do it. We'll, we'll do it after Labor Day. So we'll yeah. do it. Dude, we we got to do it. Got to yeah. do it. Uh, Rick Sheckman, uh, uh, I'll be out there soon. You know, that's I'm I'm threatening to do that, so you can you can plan a vacation around it. Uh, <laughs> I got nowhere to go. Rethinking Baltimore now. <laughs> yeah, we sit in his room, and I'm in this little rocking chair uh, that he has, and uh, we just talk, and we talk, and we have Thai food, and we have we go down for Thai food. I love the pad Thai down there, and then we go back and we talk, and then I get back and on. Then the I drive to the subway. He takes me to the subway, and the subway takes me two hours to get home, more time than I spent with him. So, you know, it's, uh, uh, but it's really nice. I really enjoy going out there. It gets me away from Marjorie, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> Everybody wins. Same thing. Everybody wins. Except Shaggy. Uh, Mike Chisholm, thank you so much. Charlie Walsh, I said always, you know, I'm, I, I'm disappointed I don't have you at night because you're out doing baseball uh refereeing or whatever that umpiring softball so but i know you make a few bucks off of it and everything so who am i to complain yeah. but you're you are missed edward Berger. thank you so much now with fluoride <laughs> <laughs> you know anything you say could be funny uh, Scott Boddicker, thank you so much. I wish you'd call the late show a little more often. We have some yeah, I'll try. I'll try. Yeah. Uh, Len LaFrisco, always good to talk to you, Len. Uh, Marjorie Miller, I'll see you in a few minutes. And uh, Mark Thorner, uh, gee, uh, you know, I love how you should call the show all the time. Uh, my weird work schedule. Uh, that's whenever you can. You know, you're always welcome. I, I love you to death. And uh, thank you. Thank you all, as a matter of fact. Uh, as I bring this thing to a close. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Everybody wave goodbye. Have a good week. Okay, there we go.